I'm trying something totally new to me. I'm going to make a 3D textured rose piece out of some leftover fabric. Combined with some interesting techniques and textures, I hope to leave you ready to chop up an old t-shirt and try this one out with me. Let me show you how to do it. By the way, this unique piece is for sale on my website, abcreativeofficial.com. How would you feel about making something totally different using different media today? So you would be quite surprised when I put this on. I would like to make some flowers out of fabric and I want it easy and accessible for everyone. I would like some roses. I'm going to cut out some sections. I suppose I could cut them in squares but I think I prefer these. don't even know whether that's the right size but so kind of imagining how we scrunch it up into a rose. I've never done it at all. I've never tried. I'll have three out of this section. Let me cut them all out. I looked online and I saw one artist, Studio Silver Creek, and she was doing some amazing roses. I recommend that you check her. Wonderful work. I think she was using gesso and acrylic paint, but I bought some other stuff just to test uh, what I could use for my mixture. I'm going to make some kind of paste for my flowers. I believe I need to water it down. Now which colour? Anything that I mix with it will be much lighter. I'll probably go for red. A bit of all-purpose filler. I haven't seen anyone else doing those flowers except for that one artist I mentioned. I'll put a link in the video's description so you can check her out. I, uh, she made squares but I've decided to go with circles. This is a complete guess. I hardly ever use Mod Podge. That should water it down a bit, shouldn't it? That's that for now. Red. Which red? To be honest, whichever red I'm going to put in is going to turn pink. Maybe crimson. Oh, it's even up. Oh, that's nice. It's even unopened. Oh. All right. So actually, it is pink, but it's a um, strange pink, a raspberry kind of colour. I'm going to put them on the mat to dry. That's a silicone mat. This surely is a rare view. I didn't even buy my size. Oh. Okay, well, let's see. I'm so curious. So this is my working station. It's pretty thick. How about just putting a bit... Yeah. I'm trying various ones. Hold it. Okay, it's easier. Oh, I made so much of this paste. I hope I can keep it for later. Maybe I'm going to use it for some textual background, for different painting, of course. I'm going to persevere, yes, I am. Probably by rose number 15, I might become proficient. I have to show you my efficiency system now. So finally, how many have we got? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. <coughs> By the eighth one, I worked it out. That's the easiest thing. So spread it here. Put your pancake there. Or a square if you want. I don't have to squeeze anything with my hands. Take the excess off. And now pinch it. Pinch it and turn it. You know what? I'm, I'm quite happy with them. And that's the only mess I made. So after all, it was a successful experiment. Let's put this perfect container for it. I have to watch, watch out not to eat it by accident. I kept them on the radiator overnight and they are solid. 
Look how cute. I was going to make an arrangement on the canvas, but then I thought maybe it would look much better in the shadow box. Let's open this and see what to do next. Also, I do, I do want them deep red. I wanted the inside of the, of the flowers to be the darkest. I've opened the box. I'm going to draw inside because that's what's going to be seen. I'm thinking of making a vase. I'm thinking of making some interesting background arrangement. A little ravioli scone. Didn't you think that they look like ravioli? Put them upside down. Not that it matters. I'm sure I'll be reshuffling them. I could have turned the board. Yes, of course I could have. Yes, thank you. I could hear you. That means that I do have space for the vase and I do have some space for the background. How am I going to make the vase? Good question. I made the same shape of the vase for my forget-me-nots. Uh, I don't know if that's centre, probably not. It doesn't look decent. So keeping my vase in the middle. Maybe I'm going to use a drawing clay. Please guess. How many roses do we have? I don't know. I'll have to check. So how many do we have? Could you please write in the comments? Last time you guessed correctly, we were counting the berries with my bullfinch. That was a very cute bird. If you haven't watched it, please do. It was also fun to make him. I was about to leave it here, then I remembered my lion video. <laughs>
and cover the background with one layer, quick layer of gold. That was super quick because I used spray paint and I didn't even want to make it solid. You can see some patches. So I'm planning some white on top. While this one is getting dry, I am going to make those flowers look beautiful. Hopefully, let's try some of the red colours. I'm not sure which red to use. I thought crimson might look nice because it's not so orangey. It's a nice deep red. I only want a bit on my sponge because I definitely don't want to cover my flower too much. I think I'll be using my finger. Sorry, I use my fingers for everything. That's why they are constantly <laughs> dirty. Okay, it's nice, but it might be, just might be a bit too dark. Let me check another crimson, see if this is equally... Oh, this is... This is lighter. Oh, this is... Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, I like this. So this is a more pinky. Uh, why am I not using a brush? Because I want to keep as much of this deeper colour underneath as possible. So you see how pretty, but then we've got all the depth from the border underneath. That's nice. It kind of reminds me, you know, I used to make some leather artwork when I was in my 20s. It's quite fashionable then. Very cute. Okay, I will not keep you watching me apply red to every petal. I think the golden texture looks really nice. I am still considering another colour in the background. I do want the lace to pop even more. At the moment we've got some really nice uh, texture, but we lost a bit of a definition. I was looking for some, well, let's just say dried up white, because I don't want to clog the patterns. And I also found the sponge, so I think that's going to be perfect. If I put a very, very thin layer, I don't know, I really don't know what to think. What if I check the black and I don't like it? I'm going to do one section in black and we'll compare. Mm. Ah, not much wiser. Okay, I definitely don't want the pattern to stand out like this. Well, since I am so adventurous, I keep rubbing off and on. The last thing I can test, having those two now, is black background with gold <laughs> rubbings. Would you like to see that? Am I going a bit too far? I did it. <laughs> it's all black. All I need to do is to wait till I can apply some gold. Okay, I think this is my last trial. Otherwise, I have to make another board. Now, one of my favorite things. Rubbing some gold on the flower. To show you, they will look nice on black, honestly. I think my third trial probably, probably will be happy with this. Do you know what I like about polymer clay the most? That it's so fast. You make things. And in 20 minutes, it's solid. The only annoying thing is that it dries out quickly. Look. So that's my solution. Vaseline. It does help if you warm it up before or persevere. Just like this. Vaseline and something warm. I've got some hot water here. And I can feel <laughs> it's squashing the clay. Look. See how soft? So I have to roll a vase now. And also I am going to flatten the edges so it's nice and round. Let's, let's do that.
I'm going to transfer my vase to the oven for 20 minutes and it's going to stay there in 110 degrees. Fourth attempt at the background probably. I don't think I've ever <laughs> tested so many backgrounds. Well, let's try. Well, that's a nice effect. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Subtle. So I think I'll do this. And if it's slightly uneven, that's fine. The sponge seemed to be sucking it all up. I've got the browns here, burnt amber, burnt sienna, I've got the gold. I don't know what colour I want, but I do want some shadows. Oh, by the way, my last video, the lion video, thank you so much for all your lovely comments. I really, really appreciate it. I wish I had more than 24 hours in a day so I could reply to all of them, but I do have another job and you know it. And thank you so much for being so understanding. So I did ask you whether you would want to see an easy version with a stencil and so many replies that yes. So of course I will do it, but I didn't even have the frisket paper. So I've ordered stuff and that's why I'm doing a different video now, but the, there will be a simpler version of the lion coming. Absolutely yes. And I'm so glad that you liked my lion. It's already on the way to Texas. So now I think it's time to put everything together. Okay, so now I'll be playing with the flowers for the probably next half an hour. I'm joking, maybe less, maybe less. What do you think of this arrangement? Is it cute? So I am ready to glue my stuff. That's the diamond glaze, that's the glue I'm using. I will be of course gluing everyone individually to make sure that they adhere very nicely. This glue is really strong. I use it for jewellery making. I've never had anything fall off my canvas yet, so hopefully it never will. I've realised that I should have painted the background behind the flowers. Oh, by the way, doesn't it look like some kind of medieval portrait? Imagine there's a face, nice colour, like Elizabeth I, with some flowers on her head. That would be an interesting portrait. Well, I must say, this piece is so um, unusual. <laughs> it's not even something that I would expect that I would make. It's, it's, I wonder who's going to be looking for some old t-shirts or shirts to try out. I mean, this is something anybody can do. You can have some nice family time and <laughs> create some flowers. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Well, I think it looks almost finished. Look at this. How cute are these? And I do like the vase, I must say. I was thinking first maybe to make some other, something else to put in between those flowers. The lady from Studio Silver Creek, she used some red berries or beads. And I thought everything is so goldish and so diffrastic. And I came across these in my cupboard. What do you think of these? They're so solid. They look like made of leather. I would have never in a million years guessed that this is fabric. You tell me that this is fabric. Not really. Oh, I'll just sprinkle. I like sprinkle like this. <laughs> How fun is that? Ding, ding, ding. I might reposition them. I I'm going to try the big one. Just, just try it and see. I am going to use super glue. I applied now and I'll have to hold it for a minute, perhaps. There we are. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you stayed this long, please let me know by incorporating the word t-shirt in a comment. This way I will know you watch till the end. If you are looking for more content, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where I upload an extended version of my tutorials each week. And don't forget that you can own this original piece by heading over to my website, abcreativeofficial.com. See you all next week during the premiere of my new tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.